and German language teaching Yasemin Ajar Hocam and English language teaching Erdem Hocam and Zeynep Hocam and myself. Um, we are analyzing social interaction as uh, you might guess. Uh, for that one, you might think that is a tedious work, but it is not. So I think uh, it might sound a bit daunting though, but it's not that daunting. Um, I'll chop my speech into three sections, uh, but I should tell you that the 45 minutes or one hour is no near enough to do a CA analysis. I think some CA people are here and they wouldn't say no to what I just said, uh, but I'll do my best to make it as uh, smooth as possible and as understandable as possible. Um, I'll start with some explanations on conversation analysis methodology. Then uh, I'll do a workshop on transcription, uh, Jeffersonian transcription and the Mondada. And then I'll play a very short extract from kindergarten interaction. And I'll ask you as my participants to join me to analyze the interaction, that particular interaction together. Uh, feel free to say anything you want to say, uh, but you don't have to participate, of course, you can just be the observer. Uh, you are more than welcome. Uh, I think if I want to talk about conversation analysis, um, it is not particular to classroom interaction. Uh, it comes from sociology itself, uh, but we are doing actually applied CA to classroom interaction as we are teacher trainers. Uh, so personally, if I ask me, why we need a conversation analysis. It is a wasting of time, it is tedious, it is daunting. You have to transcribe lots of information. I think um, I always support the idea that the devil is in the details, but sometimes I feel like I am dancing with the devil when I do a conversation um, analysis research because uh, going to the schools on the practicum, you are observing your students there, like teacher trainees, and just observation sometimes really not taking us anywhere. But if we do play with microanalysis, you can see the devil in the details. Um, so sometimes I feel like I'm really dancing with the devil. So I, I don't know whether you like this analogy or not. Um, so I'll start with sharing my screen here. I think the first thing to know about conversation analysis is how to make an analysis itself because turns are complicated. Um, it takes a sequential analysis. I mean, when I say sequential analysis, um, this is a turn starting from line one to line five and another turn comes here and another turn in line seven here. So this is the sequential analysis. Um, I think the first thing to know about conversation analysis is a MIC perspective and the next turn proof procedure. Um, I'm not going to play the video of that particular interaction. This is just for the analysis purposes to give you the basic rationale behind how to do uh, an analysis, basically. Uh, so if we look at here, if we sum up one of the advantages of knowing a foreign language, is that when we run into an unknown term, we can understand it in another language. Is that right? So no one is answering here. There is an intergap. And the teacher steps in, takes the turn again, and asks another confirmation. Did I get it right? So based on this extract, I can make a claim based on the evidence and also by using the next turn procedure. So I'm using the next turn procedure by saying that teacher doesn't accept nonverbal confirmation. Teacher wants to get verbal confirmation. And the evidence is here. When the students in chorus utter, mm -hmm, then teacher in line eight takes the turn and say, all right, then I continue with my last question. So what happens in line five here is not enough for teacher as a confirmation. So the teacher asks for a verbal confirmation. So 
this is a basic, for example, analysis that I, and I used emic perspective here. So what I meant by emic perspective is that what is obvious to the participants at that particular interaction is also obvious to me as an analyst. So the teachers asking for verbal confirmation is obvious to participants here, is obvious to students because students utter mm -hmm, as a verbal contribution. And this is also obvious to me. So I think uh, I'll take it to the difference between interaction analysis, conversation analysis, and also discourse analysis from here. Um, I think when I say conversation analysis and interaction analysis, I'm using the terms interchangeably as conversation analysis started with um, call recordings uh, by Zach and Shagalow. And at that time, the technology was not that developed, so they didn't have chance to uh, analyze video recordings. Since quite recently, we have this um, opportunity to analyze social interaction by looking at the embodied actions because we have cameras right now. So I am calling it as an interaction analysis, actually, because when we say conversation analysis, it might sound like a conversation analysis is only dealing with verbal contributions. No, conversation analysis is also dealing with nonverbal contributions. We have to deal with nonverbal contributions as well, because what happens here nonverbally is not treated okay by the teacher. But what comes here as an embodied confirmation, if I may say, because this confirmation is embodied, because at the same time as the students are producing mm -hmm, as a verbal contribution, they also they are also nodding. So this is an embodied uh, confirmation of what teacher asks uh, asks them to, to do. Um, I think maybe you got the rationale behind emic perspective and next turn proof procedure and what is obvious to the participants here should be obvious to the analyst, which is not the case in discourse analysis and which is not the case in interaction analysis, because if you are doing interaction analysis, you might uh, say something beyond the context, beyond the interaction. I think conversation analysis is reliable and a valid methodology since we can't speak further beyond what is obvious to us here. So what is obvious to me here is just the teachers asking for a confirmation and waiting for a verbal confirmation from the students. Um, I'm going to open my slide maybe here. So I'll take you to the transcript now, but before that, you have to see my, oops, here. So this is going to be the transcript that, will be, that we will be working on today. It is just includes 28 lines. I'll play the video, I'll play the interaction a couple of times, and then uh, I'll ask for your contributions to that interaction. But before that, of course, I'm going to explain what each notation means in here. Yeah, maybe here I can put the interaction. <coughs> So uh, before that, I'll give the floor to Almula Altanojam. Uh, she was the director, she was the head of the um, kindergarten school administration at that time. So she'll provide some information on the background of this interaction and also uh, context. Hi everyone, uh, I am Edith. Uh, the recording was taken in a kindergarten in an university. Uh, a consent form was signed by the uh, children's parents before the recording. Uh, the children in this video are between 48 and 60 months. Uh, this is an English lesson as a foreign language. Children's native language is Turkish. Uh, this is teacher's first year in teaching English in kindergarten. Uh, in the lesson we have recorded, uh, the teacher uses activities to children, uh, the school objects names in English. Uh, the teacher begins the lesson uh, by showing objects from 
flashcards and saying their names in English. Then she shows the real objects, uh, says their names in English and wants to the children to repeat after her. Uh, in the part of the video that we will present in this workshop, uh, teacher use a realia to practice uh, classroom objects names in English. Uh, she puts on the ground the classroom objects like book, notebook, uh, pencil, etc. Uh, she calls children in uh, turn and wants to the children uh, to find and show the objects she said. Uh, if you have any question, you can write chat box. Thank you, Kocam. Thank you, Almula Hocam. Uh, so I'll share the transcript. So if you have the opportunity to print it out, maybe you have a printer just next to you, you can print this out and it will ease the ways in which you'll um, see the video and compare it to your transcripts. Uh, I'll also do my best to place both on my screen, uh, but I'm not sure whether I can fit both of them. Uh, but it would be a nice idea to print it out, well, if you have the chance to do so. And I'll also share now the Mondadas transcript and the Jeffersonian um, transcription symbols. So um, this will be a kind of like screenshot of, of our interaction. Um, at that particular interaction that I'm going to play, we have four participants and all of them, all of the names here are pseudonames. So they are not real names, they are pseudonames. Um, so we have TA is a teacher, F for this um, particular um, kit and uh, BE for this particular one, and Ber is for this particular um, girl. Uh, from the back angle, I'll also play the interaction from the back angle. Uh, so you can see Ber here, and B here, F here, and TA teacher here. So um, in this transcript that I just um, uploaded on the checkbox, it, looks complicated and kind of daunting, uh, but it is not actually. So I'll do my best to explain you what each one um, refers to here. So I have a Turkish orthographic transcription here. Um, you'll write it in the first line. So we call it orthographic trans transcription. Since my data is in Turkish and this is an international platform conference, uh, we need to, we just had to write um, gloss and also uh, word morpheme by morpheme translations for the international participants. So we call that three layers of transcription. You start from the orthographic one, Yardeya, and then literal translation, morpheme by morpheme, floor, and then the gloss idiomatic translation, it is on the floor. <clears throat> So you have a gap here, and we call that micro pulse, a tenth of a second, and you have here 0 0.2 seconds of silence, again as an intergap, and this is elapsed time by tens of seconds. What do I mean by that? There is a break, a pulse here, so you write it as an intergap. Again, there is a pulse here, but this one is longer than that one. Um, how do we know it? We have special uh, software for that one. 
um, Audacity. Um, if you put your audio recording, uh, unfortunately, Audacity doesn't let us put video recordings. I don't know what's wrong with it. Maybe my computer has problems. Uh, but Audacity help us to find the micropoles here. So here, sound waves, you can see there's interaction here, there's verbal contribution. When you come to here, uh, you can measure, you can calculate your intergap or intragap uh, like that. It is written in here. You can see it is it 0 0.4 or when you come here. Uh, so this is a pose. So it is 0 0.2 um, seconds of uh, silence. Okay, so you can see a word back in parentheses, and this is unintelligent sound. We are not sure whether we heard the right word there, so we put two double parentheses there. Um, maybe it is a different Turkish word, like kalk, like um, something other, but while uh, I'm playing the interaction, you have to be careful about this. And I have here double parentheses, and this double parentheses refers to um, transcriber description. So this is, as an analyst, as a transcriber, this is my description. So B orients to F. And here I have an overlap sign. This is overlap on set. This means that teaching uh, could I ask you to unmute your microphones, please? Um, this is basically line, ter third line and fourth line. There is an overlap here. So teacher utters F at the same time as B is uttering Gustav's nasal. So there is an overlap in here. Uh, underscoring is word stress. There's a stress in this um, part of the word. And Collins, this is the sound stretching. This is the prolongation of the sound. Uh, it's like F, F or F give it uh, like, is the sound stretching or the prolong uh, prolongation we have there. Um, capitalization is the uppercase. This is the louder sounds compared to the surrounding talk. And we have arrows here, up and down arrows. It is high and low pitch, which is the um, intonation contour. And I have a latching notation here. So the latching, no gap or break between the tunes. There is not gap here. Uh, it is like at the same time, uh, towards the end of the teacher's utterance notebook, F utters, can I show it immediately without waiting? And we have this degree sign. So the degree sign is more like words uttered silently compared to the uh, surrounding talk. And um, there's un uh, this part highlighted in red they are the embodied actions. So the F in this interaction starts to show the notebook to the class until line 20, uh, 27. So this is the end of embodied action where F finishes showing the notebook to the class at the same time as the teacher utters sit. So shows the notebook and this is uh, this refers to a uh, line 27. So the end of this action is in line uh, 27. Uh, I'll now play the video a couple of times and Okay, I can't hear the sound. I think there's something wrong. Okay. 
Fukujang. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got. I just got. Player. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. Maybe. I'll try my best to fit both on my screen. This is from the back angle. Wow. 
Okay, um, so if you want me to play it back again, or I'll give you now like two or three minutes, and I'll again share my screen for the Jeffersonian transcript symbols. Maybe you can have a look at them as well while um, searching for um, some kind of um, claims. Uh, and I'm going to take your claims based on evidence of this particular interaction. But anyone who wants to, who wants me to play the video back again. Okay. Now, maybe like two or three minutes, I'll give and then I'll take your claims or analysis. Here, you can make use of this um, information.
Um, I think, yeah, time is up. Um, I have stopped this and I can, well, you don't have to say anything, guys. So do not feel obliged to say something on this particular interaction. You can just um, see what people are saying or how people are doing their um, analyses based on the, this particular interaction. Uh, who wants to go? Any volunteer? Well, normally, if we were in a face-to-face -face classroom environment, we would do a round robin, uh, which means that we start from one person and the next person, and then from the from them to the next person. Um, by doing so, everyone has chance to say something. But if they don't want to say something, they can just say pass. Um, nothing striking. Um, yeah, we normally focus on something striking in this interaction. So what's happening? Uh, Emin Ojam, I can see that you are establishing recipiency. Hello, <laughs> everyone. Uh, uh, Ojam, yes, thank you. I'll, I'll share the transcript. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. In this extract, uh, we can see whenever the teacher says the notebook, he points to a random material in lines 16 and 17. Uh, please look at the uh, 16 in line 16 and 17. Uh, and in line 15, the teacher says notebook by shaking her head. When EF looks at the teacher, he is used to this pattern of behavior, which is a combination of verbal and embedded action. Following this, when the teacher says notebook, he just changes to point different materials without looking at the teacher. We can see the evidence of this in lines 16 and 17. Uh, it simply means that students get used to their teachers' behavior patterns. Thank you. Thank you, Emine Ojan. And anyone who is against what Emine Hoca just said or who is in favor of her claim? Um, don't mind. Yeah, I can go if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can. I'll, I'll share the screen again. Thank you. Uh, just in addition to what Emine Ojan said, um, I think uh, in line 15, before uh, line 15, um, if it tries to make an eye contact with the teacher, uh, he, he gazes towards the teacher. And I think it might show that he's requ requesting for confirmation somehow, uh, but he, he couldn't achieve it, I guess. Um, and a teacher, by the way, uh, repeats the target word like seven times, I think, <laughs> as far as I can count. Um, and uh, we can see FS uh, candidate uh, answers in nonverbal way all the time. Um, I'm not sure if he pronounces at the end. I, I think he, he very silently pronounced notebook at the end, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, so we see nonverbal um, contribution from FA all the time. And uh, poor FA tries really hard, I think, to, to find this notebook. And uh, I think a teacher um, uses just two resources throughout the, uh, throughout the extract, as Emino Jam said already, he, you, she uses a nonverbal non uh, resource, shaking her hand, and uh, she repeats the word. But I wonder if this changes uh, in, the, in the following extracts or in the following interactions, because I think she might mind, mind the word somehow like trying to type something on a note, write something on a notebook or something else. But she, uh, interestingly, she doesn't try anything else. She just repeats the word. And I wonder if, if, if it changes. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Betty Lojan. Uh, can I? Yes, Merve Hocam. Thank you so much for such great uh, workshop, firstly. And in addition to Emine Hocam and Betty Lojan's uh, analysis, actually, maybe I can say that teacher also uh, displays her preference with uh, her own embodied actions actually in very clear way because if she, if she didn't get any preferred response like uh, pen or scissors uh, she sometimes shakes her head or she uh, waits a bit she gives a floor the students actually firstly and then if she elicit a preferred response this time uh, she gives the floors to the students because uh, if you look at in line 22, for example, if it wants to show uh, this one to other students in the classroom, and this time teacher gives the floor to the students uh, and uh, actually after uh, FA completes this action, uh, and then teacher says that you can sit down. So I think this is really important for managing classroom interaction and classroom management actually. This is really important. And also, if you look at the bear position, uh, she or he, I'm not sure, but tries to give some hint to FA also. If you look at in line 10, firstly, uh, bear says that yerdeya, uh, it comes uh, like that in verbal utterance format. And also in line 12, this time bear states a notebook uh, in a quieter format. So. Uh, the other participants also try to back up this conversation. So I think this is really important finding for such kind of analysis also. Yeah. Thank you, Merve Hocam. You're welcome. Uh, I think before the question and answer session, I can take one more comment. One more, um, well, if you have any. Fukujam, is this how it goes all the time in the classroom? Is this an established interaction is, uh, in, in this classroom? Like, uh, I mean, the resources changes during the, uh, during the term or? Well, uh, the teacher uh, does the same with each kid in the, in the classroom. Okay. Uh, and this is the um, similar and usual way of interaction for each kid. All right, all right, thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, I hope you just enjoyed it. It might sound a bit tedious and daunting, but it is not. Um, I hope you like it. Um, and I can take, or we can as a group take your questions if you have any. Um, well, I was not looking at the chat box. Maybe some of my friends, colleagues, they answered your questions already. <laughs> so if you want to shout them out, you can do so. You can. You can speak to your uh, Maybe I should give this to chair, right? I'm sorry, Bushra Hojam. It, it's uh, okay. I mean, Hojam, you were doing pretty well, actually, handling the presentation. And thank you for the effort here. I mean, I can see that it's a lot of hard work, actually. I'm a foreigner to CA, conversational analysis, but I don't know. I mean, uh, it seems daunting, actually. And it also seems like, you know, you really love it. So... Well, I think uh, it's worth some attention, in fact, and it will be very popular as far as I can see in the future. And here I can see Ahmed Hocam's question, but I, Erdem Hocam, have you answered it? Not, not completely, but I, I can just ask Ufuk Hocam to, to handle with this one as well. Ufuk Hocam, sure, if you can ahead, just please. go for Ahmed Hocam's um, question. Do you want me to read it or can you just read uh, it? Is Ahmet Hoca online? Maybe could I ask him to? Uh, ask? I think, yeah, he's still online. He's, he looks like he's here. But he Ahmet Hoca, is... yeah, hello, hello. He's always there. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Ahmet Hoca. Yeah, I'm always at my office. Thank you very much for this uh, nice, informative, enlightening uh, workshop. And uh, I asked the question, uh, but uh, I'm also a stranger to conversation analysis. I just want to ask a very quick question, but it is 
uh, actually really uh, difficult to answer because we are dealing with big data line by line. Uh, this is tedious and daunting for me, but not for you. <laughs> but uh, there may be some kind of misinterpretations of the data, data analyze it and interpret, okay, this, this is this and this is that. So it is not possible possible to eliminate all those barriers of uh, subjective handling of the data. But this is this interpretation or this is that interpretation. Do we have such kind of guideline? Uh, actually, uh, when you talk about guidelines, it reminds me of this course analysis. <laughs> um, in conversation analysis, we don't have a guideline. We don't have a like, criterion. Mm -hmm. um, it is just sequential analysis and we have to talk about what is displayed to us and actually uh, uh, I think I cannot go into detail because the data is in an, uh, an open mind uh, thing, but you are uh, using audio uh, recordings and also most of the time while you're doing some kind of conversation analysis, you're not present in the situation, in the context. So uh, sometimes it is, I think, advisable to be uh, in the context that you're dealing with. Okay, you're not a part of the classroom, so you just take uh, the video and the audio recordings and transcribe them and try to analyze them. And in this analyzing process, I think we're all human beings. We see something, but we don't have any eye tracking or we don't feel the atmosphere in the classroom. So it's possible to misinterpret the data. That's why, why I'm talking about this. Is there an easy way, I mean, guideline to do all this tedious work? No, unfortunately, Good luck. <laughs> no. Good luck then. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry for interrupting you, but I think Ahmed your point is right. There is a question of reliability here, but since we have meetings which are regular, regularly held in the in some uh, groups like Human or right like Aromark, and in the Hojam says that I see such a thing, then Emne Hojam might say that I am against it. such kind of discussions after having such kind of 